Why does the world hate women? Hi, hello, I've been planning another video essay over the last few weeks, however something happened on Twitter and now I am angry. Are we surprised? No, not really. So welcome to another episode of Talking Points, a series where I take something on the internet that has pissed me off, usually Twitter, and I have a little bit of a rant about them, talking points. I never thought I'd speak in defence of Abby Shapiro, or known on YouTube as Classically Abby, but my conscience and utter disgust with the world has kind of swayed me into her defence this week. Now don't get me wrong, I don't like Abby Shapiro, I don't agree with her views, I think some of them are quite terrible. However, she does have the right to think these things, but the way that she goes about telling women how to live their lives, understandably bothers me. But that doesn't mean that I'm okay with the recent sexualization of her body, her pregnant body. Big mommy milkers. So horny it should be a legal voice. She looks nice. Happy Shapiro's baby. I only drink the finest breast milks. If you haven't noticed already, this channel has taken a sharp left turn. And it's actually quite feminist, really. I've always held the term feminist with pride because I actually understand what feminism is and I don't think that it's the shouty justice warriors that we make fun of. But back to the matter at hand, Abby Shapiro is preggers. Congrats. Um, she either wanted the baby or wanted the baby because, you know, for her, that's the only option she's allowed. Abby isn't a feminist. <laughs> I think that's pretty clear. In fact, some people have described her as conservative, bordering on fascist. But sexualization of her is still pretty grim. I want to state it now that the immorality of an action shouldn't depend on how sympathetic we are to the victim that's affected. Of course, effect comes into it, and we should consider how someone's actions affects others, but we must do this without bias, even when it comes to horrible people that wouldn't do the same. I'm pretty sure I've said it before, or I've said it and then cut it out of a video, but if you murder someone, you're still a murderer. That doesn't really change depending on who it is. Of course, there's a lot of nuance and circumstances that can change how we view someone that commits that kind of crime, but when we strip it down, it's kind of agreed across most societies that taking the life of another is immoral, even in the cases where the ends may justify the means. But we're not, we're not talking about murder, uh, Abby hasn't been murdered, but people have sexualized her without her consent and they've sexualized her pregnant body. I don't know why I have to state that it's not okay to sexualize someone without their consent, but it's not. It's utterly disgusting, misogynistic in this circumstance, and it makes me feel ill. A lot of it is put down as memes, but trying to pass objectification off as a joke just belittles the issue that many people experience on a day-to-day. -day. This is a form of sexual harassment. These people, and yes, I'm saying people because it's not just men that are doing this, are making sexual comments about a woman without her consent. And it seems that the justification for this, for those who, you know, actually know that they need to be justified in their actions, all right, lefties. The justification is that, well, it's Abby Shapiro. She's a terrible human being. Why the hell are we defending someone who actually belittles our cause? I don't know, because I'm a decent human being? Perhaps I apply my morality and my conscience to all, not just those that I agree with? Maybe some of us aren't hindered by bias and sexual arousal? Maybe because some of us can see a picture of a pregnant woman and go, wow, pregnant woman. Maybe some of us can go without pointing out the fact that said woman has boobs. What do you know? Women have boobs. Pregnant ladies have boobs. It's almost as if there's a reason for that. It's almost as if female mammals have a cause to develop a place where milk comes from to feed their young. It's almost as if a certain hormonal makeup enables people to develop breasts. What do you know? 
The major focus of these memes tends to be on how big Abby's breasts are. Like, some of these pictures are even edited to make them seem bigger than they are. And this is just utter degeneracy. I don't know if you were paying attention in biology when you were 12 or 13, or sex education, but breasts, you know, they kind of grow <laughs> when you're pregnant. However, people just see big booba and they have to sexualize it. But why? They're just breasts. Well, seeing them as sexual is an active response that's encouraged by years of societal convention. Breasts haven't always been regarded as sexual things. When reflecting on how her pregnant body is viewed and portrayed by others, Yasmin writes to The F Word about how the change of her breast size is praised and viewed with envy by other women. Like, big breasts are something we should aspire to, and it's just the bonus and sometimes main consequence of being pregnant. However, she notes that this is problematic because it re-establishes objectification of the female form as acceptable. Pregnancy requires that breasts be recognised as part of the female anatomy that is not simply there for aesthetic or sexual purposes. They are preparing to become functional entities, yet even now, there is an emphasis from without to maintain them as purely sexual. And this ideology inspires further discomfort in not just Yasmin, but many women and many people that breastfeed. It's very common for the sexualization of pregnant women's bodies to happen, but it doesn't just cease to exist once that person's had a baby. Breastfeeding is another thing that people are forced to feel uncomfortable about. Yasmin argues that this is due to the stress upon large naked breasts in pornographic content. The association with sex means when they're being used for their primary biological function, feeding a child, they are still seen as sexual and therefore inappropriate in public settings. Much of the discomfort and shaming around public breastfeeding stems from the overwhelming understanding of breasts as sexually arousing to the viewer. So apparently, a woman feeding her child is sexual. Can we see how that's a little bit fucked up? As one article suggests, the true biological importance of breasts is to feed human babies. When it comes to breastfeeding a child, there's absolutely nothing sexual about that. And to be honest, if you found it sexual, I think you might need to go to therapy. But this is because breasts are publicised, and they are publicised as sexual because sex sells. We see breasts everywhere, on television, at the movies, in the magazines, making them a sexualised commodity, and profit-hungry companies will use them for all that they are worth, despite this not being their true purpose. In this capitalistic, exploitive view of the female body, we often overlook the fact that breasts have not always been regarded as irresistibly attractive in all points of history across all cultures. In fact, many traditional cultures around the world didn't require their people to cover breasts until the introduction of certain cultural norms or religions. In locations where people are routinely topless, the attitude towards breasts are, unsurprisingly, different to places in which there are prohibitions to their exposure. And so, by encouraging people to cover up when they're breastfeeding, or sexualizing their grown breasts due to pregnancy, as with Abby Shapiro, we are upholding this societal convention that breasts are first and foremost sexual goods and are essential to the development of human babies as an afterthought. Isn't it a bit weird how somehow selling products or giving pleasure is secondary to human life? Though, <laughs> why am I surprised that consumerism is considered a higher priority than the nursing of a child? In a lot of the responses to the criticisms that I've seen online, it seems that those that are sexualizing or objectifying Abby don't understand what it is that they're doing or why it's damaging. Or, you know, they're just saying that they don't to act ignorant so they don't get labelled as purposefully misogynistic. 
But to be honest, I do think anybody who thinks that they're left wing should understand why objectification is problematic at the least. Centuries ago, the philosopher Immanuel Kant argued that sexual love makes of the loved person an object of appetite. As soon as that appetite has been stilled, the person is cast aside, as one casts away a lemon which has been sucked dry. In other words, recipients of sexual desire are only seen as a means to achieve satisfaction. Objectifying a person means shifting that person's a few notches down the continuum, away from fully fledged personhood and towards inanimacy as a mere object. Less agency, less autonomy, less capacity for subjective experience and so on. As explained by Nussbaum, objectification implies being perceived and treated as a tool for others use, being considered interchangeable with others, being inert, being violable, being denied autonomy and experience, and being perceived as an object owned by someone. Those who objectify something not only view it as something to satisfy their desire, but they also have the power to make it have the properties that they find desirable. So with Abby and other pregnant people, they are reduced to their breasts, and their breasts reduced to the object of sexual desire, disregarding the actual purpose of their anatomy. To be sexually objectified means having a social meaning imposed on your being that defines you to be sexually used according to your desired uses and then using you that way. Abby is therefore not seen as a person with different qualities, with different purposes or opinions, but is reduced to an object to fit the gaze of the objectifier. And sadly, I can hear the responses in my ears now. But it's Abby Shapiro! Look at everything she's done! She's such a bad person! And yeah, people that have done things, horrible things, may not be that deserving of our kindness. That's a bit obvious, isn't it? I don't think Abby should be able to spread harmful views or project hate, but I also don't think that people in general should be able to do that, at least not without opposition. And that includes hateful views towards those that are spreading hate. We can criticise Abby for so many things that lie within her control, like her political views, her content, her conservatism, her expectations on other women to stay classic. This can all be done without sexualising her body. When we resort to misogyny, to silence our political enemies, we lose our political integrity along the way. Abby is more than her pregnant body, just as she is more than her political views. People aren't one-dimensional, they're not just one thing, they're complex. They're a mixture of different qualities, faults, beliefs and biases. And we should criticise those beliefs or biases when they are damaging. We should scrutinise them appropriately. But as soon as we begin to infringe upon the things that they cannot control, like appearance, gender, sexuality, race, ethnicity, anatomy, we ourselves begin to show unjustifiable bias, we may actually end up in the same sphere of hatred of those that we criticise. The problem isn't necessarily that Abby is the one experiencing this. Of course, she shouldn't be, and we should all think this, without our moral obligation to stop it being reliant on empathy or sympathy or alignment with Abby's political views. This is an issue that can affect any woman, any person, particularly people with breasts or those that can get pregnant. And the mindset that it's okay to sexualise a body a pregnant body because you don't support their views shows that you don't actually care about the morality in this case. You care about yourself. Those who only detest gross behaviour when it hurts someone that they favour show that their problem isn't actually with the behaviour itself. They are motivated by personal interests and have no consideration of the greater impact of this behaviour. Using the defence of bad people do bad things so we should be able to do bad things to bad people suggests that certain liberties, like being free from unwanted sexualization or objectification, 
are conditional to you. It's like safety from misogyny and sexism is a right to be earned and is dependent on who you are. No matter where you lie on the political spectrum, no argument justifies this treatment of anybody, even the worst of us, because it's not actually about the effect that it has on that person. It's about the views that you are projecting. Thank you for watching this lectury ranty video. Um, I'm hoping to bring out quite a lengthy video soon. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And with that, I'll see you soon.